All right. The video you're about to watch is bits and pieces of video over the last two weeks here and there. Um, I'll explain in each little scene uh, what's going on. But looks like here in a few days I'll be able to finally get all these appointments over and back out uh, for a long, longer time this time. Anyway, uh, it's just bits and pieces. It, to me, kind of a little bit boring, but anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy. Well, we got a little action here. I'm going to find out if that's the southbound or northbound, the one that's right there in the middle of the picture. Just got here to the yard. Yeah, he's on the main. There may be somebody up in there. Yeah, because there's your main line there. So. A second. Yeah, this is likely southbound just got here so didn't get a chance to see it roll in yeah I figured I'd get out and try to do a video yeah at one o'clock today I had my ultrasound then on the 28th I go in for the results on that and then on the 30th is my final appointment for everything. See, that's what, I wish I could find somebody that did artwork and c could paint some graffiti on some of my model trains. Oops. Oh. There he goes. He's northbound then, unless he's backing something in. Now I can't, maybe I can see if somebody's in the cab of that. I don't think there are. Nope. Oh, that's empty. You can hear it echoing. Well, I hear him dragging some brakes. Yeah, he's switching over, getting on the main. Oh, he's going down into the yard then. See, I just got here. I didn't see what was on either end of this. It's definitely gonna be going on north to see them box cars there. That's the type grainer I rode last time when I rode out of here. Yeah, that one's loaded. See how compressed. Uh, yeah, see that piston? It's almost in. It's got a little bit of brake on right now, but not much. Yeah, it's an old bank here, here in Kingsport. This is a regular CSX yard here, Frisco yards a few miles. 
Yep. After my ultrasound today, I uh, believe I'm going to take a trip. I definitely have to go to that appointment on the 28th. Because if I don't keep these appointments, they just keep rescheduling them. That just buries me even deeper. Plus, getting it all done, I'll be able to know more about what's going on and uh, the situation medically anyway. But other than that, I've been doing pretty good, feeling great. Yeah, that potash stuff. You see a lot of that up northwest. Uh, trying to hold my breath while I film. Yeah, he'll be here a while if he's pulled that far over into the yard work some cars you're gonna be here at least an hour then Yeah, what he'll likely do is hook those engines up on the front up here when he gets ready to go. He's going to have to have more power than that to get across the Appalachians. I don't know why my camera is not focusing. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, how does the engine behind another engine run? But if you look at these uh, electrical cables right here, when they attach another locomotive up, they'll unplug that and plug it into the engine in front of it. And whatever the engineer does in that it locomotive, it sends a signal of the exact thing he's doing to the next engine back he's just got it hooked up here because there's no other engine it's not doing anything it's just dormant so whatever that train does the others do and if he's facing the other way it just reads it in reverse the same way that's how they get one opposite running the other way like these two are kind of show you what I mean. There, see? Well, that electrical cord comes out and it plugs into this engine here. So if the engineer and conductor were on this train, let's see, he went notch notch three well this one would read not notch three but it would read it in reverse unless it was both facing forward Smell that pine wood. They're gonna pull up to the next switch.
is that potash. I've heard it pronounced two ways, potash and potash. It's like a powdered mineral. There's another good ride right there. You crawl in that hole right there and there's another hole on the right and the left. You got about a five foot by three foot area to hide in or ride it. Well, I guess I should have brought my key, but see the painted line on the on the rail there? That's where they spot the car, the last car. Like at their drop, but you can tell these ain't been here enrolled in a long time. We've got a bunch of firewood back there, kindling. There's a good camp spot up there on that wall, all concrete back in there. Yep, these are overflow boxcars. Yep. Here, not long, I'm gonna make, make a video show how to, how you open those empty boxcars that have the plug door like these. Well, I just got done with my ultrasound. Uh, of course, I'm not going to know the results on that until the 28th. I got to go down to Greenville and see a new liver doctor down there about 35 miles from here. Uh, then I'll be updated on my help situation then uh, next big thing I want to do is uh, be inside a boxcar when when there's a really bad thunderstorm and, and the hail's hitting the roof yeah there's a big pile of firewood there yeah, still really not sure what this building is here. There's plenty of old furniture. But all the wheels have taken off of most of these. Well, no way scale, truck scale. Well, that's enough room to roll out right there if you got caught in the, in the rain. Yeah, today I'm in Bristol. They're getting ready to service some customers here. They just backed down and took the crew off the crummy here and be getting it ready. I think this is the crew guys right here driving up. Hey.
they'll be servicing here in a bit. All right, here back at the old Bristol abandoned factory. The last video I made about this, somebody actually left in the comments what this place was at one time. So, if you don't mind, oh, and the person was from Bristol, uh, put in the comments what this place was at one time. Hello? We'll go in here in a bit. I'm going to go take a look at that stack. Man, that'd be one heck of a uh, camp to wait on your train. Of course, this, the railroad yard is right here, and you'd be on the side where they do the switching. The main lines would be on the other side. Yeah, we'll go in here in a second. Oh, I didn't even see this. I was watching my phone screen. A lot of plumbing stuff. I'll turn the camera off and get it going when we get back over by that smokestack. Alright, me and Ken are going to do a project. We are going to plant some of these cherry hybrid tomatoes. The baby tomatoes. We're going to start them out in a planter. Alright, Ken, I put the seeds in the bowl here. What you do is just take your finger and mash on one. Just hard enough where it sticks to your finger. You might have to lick your tip of your finger. And you get it on there and just go whoop, about that far in and then cover it up. Make sure you don't lick the same finger again that second time after you get dirt on it. There's a couple of more. And Can you where, pick up where'd two? you plant yours? Uh, right there. Okay, I better. We're going to do three. All right, you can, we'll put three in there too. But can you pick up more than one and put them in the same yeah. spot? Yeah. Because if two or three sprout in one place, we'll just pull the extra ones up. We'll just groom out the sproutlings that look the least healthy. Alright, it's okay to have leftovers. We'll just leave them for the birds. And we'll just sprinkle the, yeah, we'll just sprinkle the rest. You want to sprinkle them? Yeah, I'll sprinkle them. I'm gonna... Alright, good job. It'd be Farmer Ken already. News at five. We have a nine-year-old farmer today we are interviewing for WTKEN News at five. All right. Now we're going to go get some of that rain water I collected in that pot. You want to pour it on there and water them? Are yeah. you Okay. Just enough to kind of make the seeds start getting soft. Then they'll germinate. You know what germinate means? How much do you want me to put in like a quarter of it? Yeah, just uh, maybe half. It don't matter if you splash it a little bit. That that soil is kind of hard. And they, they should sprout without even being buried anyway. Alright, good soaking. Good job. Awesome. We'll have you farming acres of corn. And we have Orville Redenbacher, Orville Kennenbacher popcorn. Save me the rest. I'm kind of thirsty. Nah, I'm just kidding. All right. We're going to come back when these start sprouting and show you guys the progress of our tomatoes.